In this video, I'm going to show you how to find the greatest common factor using the Euclidean algorithm or the division method. So as you can see in number one, I did the F method. And just to compare our greatest common factor answer, I'm going to start with the F method for number two. All right, so I know that I need to start with my two long Fs. My first number eight goes with the first F, and my second number 30 goes with my second F. And then from the previous video, I know I need to always start with one. So one times eight is eight. We go to two. Two times four is eight. Three does not work. Three times nothing gives me eight. And then if I went to four, I could do four times two, but I already have four, so I'm gonna stop. Then with 30, one times 30 is 30. And go to 2, 2 times 15 is 30, then I can go to 3, 3 times 10 is 30, 4 does not work, 4 times nothing will give me 30, so I can skip over 4 and go to 5, and I don't have any 5, so I can continue, 5 times 6 will give me 30, and then I could try 6, but I already have 1, so I'm going to stop, and then I can see that 1 is the same, 2 is the same, I don't have any threes, no fives, 30, 15, 10, six, nothing else is the same. So based on my circled common factors, I can already see that my greatest or my biggest factor that's the same is a two. Okay, whoops, my paper moved. So on the bottom section, I'm going to show you the Euclidean algorithm or the division way to finding the greatest common factor, also using eight and 30. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use 30 divided by 8. All right, so I know that 8 times something is going to give me close to 30. And if I had a calculator, I could put 30 divided by 8 in it to find out what my whole number would be. But I already know that 3 times 8 is going to give me 24 which leaves me six. And if I do borrow, Penny, move out of the way. My kitty is right here. 10 minus four is six, two minus two is zero. So I have six as a remainder, which means I need to keep going. So I have a six and an eight, and I'm just gonna take those two numbers and divide again. So I'm gonna use eight divided by six. So again, I used my eight here and my remainder of six here, and I'm gonna divide again. So six times something is gonna give me close to eight, which I know is one, and one times six is six. If I subtract, I have two left over, and I still have a remainder, so I need to use my division again of six and two. Okay, so I'm gonna do six divided by two. Now two times three I know is gonna give me six, or six divided by two is three. So three times two is six with a remainder of zero. So now that I have zero as my remainder, I don't have to divide anymore because I don't have a remainder left. Therefore, I know that my divisor in my final division problem is going to be my greatest common factor. So I know that my GCF is going to equal two. Now if I go back and check up at the top where I did my F method, that method also had my greatest common factor as two. So as you can see, either method you choose, both is going to give you the same answer. So in this video, I showed you how to find the greatest common factor using the Euclidean algorithm or the dividing method.